I'm going to be covering plant hormones today. It's going to be quite a short topic. People hate it. I think it's more that they don't talk about it very much in everyday life, so it's kind of hard to imagine what's going on, but I promise it will be really straightforward. So let's first of all remind ourselves what the plant organs are. These are things like roots, stem, leaves and flowers. Now plants need to be sensitive, they need to respond to various stimuli and we call plants' response to stimuli a tropism. So there's your definition. A tropism is a plant's response to a directional stimulus. And what that really means is that plants need to respond to the sunlight. Why? Because the stem needs to grow upwards in order to support the leaves so they're closer to the sun so that they can carry out photosynthesis more effectively. What about the roots? Well, the roots need to grow away from the sun. They need to grow downwards. Why? Because they need to anchor the plant and stop it blowing away. And they also need to be found in soil so that they can absorb water and mineral salts, which is important for their growth and photosynthesis, of course. So it's very important that when you plant a seed, that when it grows, the shoot grows upwards and the roots grow downwards. And that's where tropism comes in. Now, there are several different tropisms, things like phototropism, photo meaning to do with light, so that's a plant's response to light. Things like the stem will show positive phototropism, i.e. they'll grow upwards towards the light, and some roots will show negative phototropism, they'll grow downwards, away from light. A second type of tropism you need to know about is called gravitotropism or geotropism, those are two names for the same things, and as the name suggests, that's plant's response to gravity, so things like roots will have a positive geotropism, whereas shoots will show a negative one. And then finally, the less well-known one is hydrotropism. Hydro meaning to do with water, so therefore again, some roots will demonstrate positive hydrotropism, whereas shoots will display negative. But it, this really does vary between plants, so some will just not really be affected by either the gravity or the light. But in, on the whole, that's the summary and that's the overview you need to know about. Right, so how, are, how do plants actually respond to these various tropisms? Well, it's through plant hormones, and it's a specific family of hormones called auxins. And what they do is, depending on their distribution in the plant, will cause cells to grow really quickly or really slowly. So, for example, auxins, when they're more concentrated in the stem, what you'll find is they'll distribute themselves on one side of the stem. And what they do is they cause the cells to grow faster so you end up with the one side where the auxins are collected, the cells grow longer and faster and that means that the other side can't keep up so you get this automatic, automatic bending and that's how you see plants that can bend towards the sunlight it's because of the auxins and their uneven distribution so they'll, they'll collect on the side away from the light they'll cause those cells to grow rapidly and grow longer than the cells closer to the light and then that will cause the whole stem to bend towards the light I hope that makes a lot of sense to you. But that also explains that if you have a plant and then suddenly you tip it over, it will kink and it will try and grow and bend in order to access as much light as possible. So they're pretty clever. The roots are slightly different in that a higher concentration of auxin does not lead to faster growth rate of cells. What you actually find is the cells with less auxin grow faster. And so if you have a huge amount of auxin in one place, you'll find that the other cells grow faster and then you'll get a bend the other way. So let's talk about a broad bean seed in order to try and understand what's going on. So you plant a seed and obviously you want the roots to go down and you want the shoot to grow up. What happens initially is the auxin is evenly distributed, but then what will happen is the auxin will distribute itself at the bottom of both the shoot and the rootlet. And then in the shoot it will cause the cells where all the auxin is to grow much longer and faster and therefore the bend will be upwards. However, in the root, and there'll be greater growth rate on the opposite side and then you get a bend the other way. So what you see with your broad bean seed is that the roots grow down and the shoot grows up. And that's really all you need to know with hormones, plant hormones. It's useful to know some of their uses. So we use them when we're making cuttings, which is when we cut a piece of rosemary, for example, and then we plant it to create a clone, to create an identical rosemary plant. And you'll often find that if you just cut a piece of rosemary and you just plant it, it won't grow. So what we do is we dip it in rooting powder, which contain plant hormones, and that will encourage their growth. So that's one use, helping cuttings grow. Second of all, we use them as weed killer. And the example we use for this is, for example, in a wheat field, you spray a huge amount of these plant hormones, and they encourage plant growth. But the point being is that the weeds have broad leaves, which means they have a larger surface area than something like a wheat. 
because wheats are thin. I don't even know if I'm using the right English for that, but they're thin and they have a small surface area. So what you find is as the plant hormone sprinkles down on them, the weeds grow ridiculously quickly, too quickly, and they die, and that's because they've caught a huge amount of that plant hormone on their leaves, so they die because they've grown too quickly. However, the narrow wheat only catches a tiny bit, so it actually has the opposite effect and it helps it grow at a really nice rate. I know that was quick, but I seriously think that's all you need to know with plant hormones. Remember to like my video if you enjoyed it, and to like my Facebook page and leave me any topic suggestions and comments, and I'll see you next time.